You ready, Maja? I think so. I'm ready, buddy. All right. Teach me grappling. What's up, guys? Brian Peterson. I've got Maja Reyes here, and you guys know when you see Maja, you're going to see some great striking stuff, but I got a big announcement to make. Guys, listen. Maja's got his own channel, and a lot of you guys have already gone over there and subscribed, and we thank you so much, but we have made a decision. Maja and I, we are going to merge and put everything on Teach Me Grappling. So we now will have Majit, all of Majit's amazing kickboxing striking content is gonna be on Teach Me Grappling. And you can still subscribe to Majit on Majit's channel to see more of his lifestyle, his healthy habits, uh, maybe some, some of his odd, stuff. interesting things that he likes to do. Surprise. But when it comes to the martial arts stuff, it's gonna be here on Teach Me Grappling. So I wanted to announce that merger. Hope you guys really, really are happy about that. Um, Manchet's an incredible guy, and I've known him for a long time. So guys, he Thank and I, you. he and I were the dynamic duo for Big John McCarthy's Ultimate Training Academy yep. with their MMA fight team. We had a um, hundred. I still remember this number: 141 fights. And out of 141 fights, this was spanning all of our fighters across about seven years seven to eight years, mm -hmm. um, 141 fights, and I think our record was 111 and 29, and I think we had one draw. Yeah. So anyway, it's a great, 100, 111 it's, wins. It's a great victory. And this guy was a part of uh, probably 90% of well, them, at least 90% well, of them. Thank you, but it all because so. we had a great team together, and I'm happy that we're going to share this. I'm, first of all, I'm thankful for Brian for putting me on his channel, and I'm very honored with that, and I hope you guys can enjoy it, and, and on my channel, from there onwards, it'll be all different lifestyle, different things, but I'm happy to share my wisdom and my knowledge, whatever I know a little bit. Thanks, to Brian, for putting in your channel. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope we're going to make some magical things for all these people. That's right. Okay, so today, what do we have for you? Guys, Frankie Edgar, Corey Sanhagen. Did you guys see that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Uh, Corey Sanhagen, uh, I don't know how tall he is. I didn't, you guys, I'm sure in the comment section can mention exactly how tall he is. Frankie yeah. Edgar, former champ, going down from 55s all the way down to 135. That's amazing. And uh, damn. Let's, let, let's go over it. Yeah. Um, so I'll be, I'll be the... Uh, You're going to be Corey because, uh, guys, Maja's the, Maja's the knee master, so he can, so, he can throw knees. <laughs> All right, so Brian is the... I'm Frankie Edgar. So Frankie Edgar, so I, I do a leg kick. I yeah. miss. Frankie Edgar sees me. What are you going to do, Brian? Yeah. So I miss. Well, when you miss, I think I'm coming at you. And if you back up and retreat, I'm thinking, I'm going to come get him. I'm going to come get him. And then as he came in, he wanted to come in, and he got kneed right in the face, guys, with that jumping knee. It was incredible. You know, there's a few interesting details that both me and Majit were, we, we watched the fight and we talked about it. And I thought, you know what? It's even though the, you might just look at it and go, big deal. It's big just deal. one big, yeah. it's like one big, you it's know, just knee. Just a big and jump that's it. knee. Yeah, just jump knee. No problem. Just but jump people, knee. But people don't realize the little what, stuff. The little stuff. The micro adjustments. Which is a big adjustment. So Brian is coming straight at me. So as he comes, Frankie Edgar likes to cut the corner. So. Sanders steps out to the right. Yeah, so th this is something that he didn't just draw him in. As he, as he, he kicks him up, he yeah, turns around. He backed up a little he bit. Backed he up, backed he's up. He's coming in. And now, I'm Frankie, I'm thinking, I'm coming after you. And so he steps out. He wants yeah. to cut me but out. But I'm, I'm trying to cut you off. Yes. Because you move to the right, and I don't want to move straight in right here and have yes. a, give you an angle. So I try to cut you off. And watch, if you come behind me here, what happens, he opened up for me straight. He went straight into my knee, so because when I stepped here, he came here. Now I jump up. Yeah. And that's where the knee came and, and the thing is, when you watch Frank Yeager's, like movement, you almost go, well, what was his plan? You know, he was rushing in. What was his plan? And I, I suspect what his plan was, him being a short fighter, they always teach the shorter fighters to hit the, the taller fighter with the overhand right because... The, the tall fighter, like I'm short to Majit right here. If, I throw if, you're, if your hands are up, just not talking about the knee, but guys, if I'm a short fighter, when Majit is standing up so tall, I just have to, when I duck down, I'm now within, in a close range. Majit's long arms, it's harder to hit me. And then I get to land that overhand right. 
-hmm. I mean, you can articulate that a little bit better than yeah. I probably well, what can. He, what it's a common it? plan. Yeah, it's a common plan to get out of the point of view and take advantage of the height and then all the takedown. Yeah, yeah, maybe get a takedown yeah. or crack him because with it. Because it's a blind spot for him to see because I'm in a short range, so I have to over and right easily catch the punch and that allows me to get inside. Not to mention, when you're short, yeah. I think when you lower your level, when you level change, I think you're going low, so my hands come down. Exactly. And then when my hands come down, the overhand like Whoa. lands. So, you know, I if you look at Frank Cave's movement, I know that it was lights out the moment the, the yeah. knee connected. Yeah. But he had this motion like as I'm trying to, to step you step that? to the side and I try to follow you, like he was gonna yeah. try to do this, Whoa. but his punch never, never it, it might have got to here, but, this got but it's too late. Punch. Beat yeah. him to the punch. But here's another thing people don't realize. What, what Sanders also did, he wind up on his Sanhagen. 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 Sanhagen wind up on his leg. So when he did, as he was going back, he was coming. Yeah. At the moment he touched the floor, look, he, he like a basketball. He stepped on it and it made him squat and jump up on yeah. it. So when I step on it, it's almost like, a, like you, before you shoot, you squat. Jump yeah, face. that you know that like you I, I I didn't think of it saying it you said like a basketball like yeah. a spring, spring like a bounce so you touch and you bounce That's why you guys face. have to do plyometrics. Exactly. It doesn't matter if you're just bouncing yeah. or you're doing this Lateral, yeah. Like or jumping over objects when you guys work your footwork and you practice like Maja Can you yeah. do that? Yeah, well, so, like so watch this. in order to be bouncing look what I'm doing I'm setting up so I can do this. I'm bouncing off Back and forth, it's pushing me forward. So when, when he came in, he stepped here and jumped straight up. See what it does? It set me up for a squat and I jump up for the knee. That's why it was so interesting, so powerful. As he came in, Abio came in, he stepped out. Look, as he stepped in now, he opens himself up to me. See, as I stepped out, Frankie stepped away and he goes straight to my center as I jump up. Yeah, that, that, that knee is now in line. In, in the line. So he came into my target instead of before he was out. Yeah. But now, as I stepped out, Frankie tried to cut the open. Yeah. Frankie actually opened himself up yeah. straight into a knee. So it's, it was such a perfectly timed setup. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was incredible because think about uh, it. What kind of simple, like little effort, how much effort by Sanhagen, how many calories were burned in that jumping knee? Exactly. To, to accomplish the entire goal of finishing Finish the fight. Again. Simple kill. It's, it's like, a, like a sword. Making, just, making a right angle at the right time, making a right positioning. Positioning is everything. Brian always says, position before submission. And like, am I wrong or right, Brian? You're no, no, it's the most common so, saying. And in same thing with striking. If you're yeah. in a perfect position, if you're in a per you can never see it like a blind spot. This is a blind spot. Mm -hmm. I can't heal right hand. And he goes inside, opens up. Now he's straight into my right hand. We talked about this earlier before. If you make the angles like what he just did, he stepped outside and yeah. he came in. If he had stayed there, if if, yeah, it if, wouldn't if, have if he would have stayed there, there's no way he would have been taken down. He would have been outside the knee, never got. Mm -hmm. But the moment he stepped out, you saw in the video, he steps out, his foot is so out, spread out, and now he cannot retrieve any of his foot back because he's anchored. Now in order to move, it's too late. By the time he moved, the knee was already up to his face and the game was over. You know, which, which I will finish with, the, the idea of pulling someone into it, like, in other words, drawing luring your opponent, you luring your opponent in, mm -hmm. um, you know, instead of making the angle, like saying, I'm gonna try to get this angle, yeah. he actually, it, like, if you yeah, think yeah, about yeah. it, guys, if I'm standing here with Maja and Maja moves to his left, that angle's there now for Maja to knee me. Ah, yeah. But I would see that. So instead, Maja moves this way, which then makes me think he was here, now I'm going to go over here. As I As go goes, this way, boom. he loaded it right up and crashed. I mean, part of the impact is the jumping knee. Part of the impact is Was Frankie running, into running right into, into it. it. That's the Increasing key. impact. Double the impact. Twice, both sides going the same velocity. Same That's direction. like a head-on collision. There you go. No waking up from that one. No seat belts, no helmets. <laughs> game over. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of uh, Corey Sanhagen and uh, Frankie Edgar. Yeah. Um, don't, drive don't do that. What, what? Don't drive ah, home. Frankie Edgar, what should he, don't fools rush in? Well, faint before you go in. Yeah, faint. See the reaction. He had loaded up. He only had one shot. He was shot. walking right into walking, it. Because he was walking him down. The problem with walking somebody down, you might walk into something. 
Yeah, yeah. It's That's very dangerous. Plus, if a guy's ready and he's fresh, yeah. you, you haven't really uh, experienced, played with the cards enough to know what the other guy's well, cards, yeah. what he, what he yeah, has. You're just throwing the ace right off the bat, throwing the biggest card you have on the table. The guy's still holding his cards, guys. Don't, yeah. don't jump into something you don't know. Always check out. First, you got to faint. See what he brings out on the table. That's he did not faint. Really he didn't check. He didn't check out what cards he was holding, how he plays. Is he aggressive? Is he unaggressive? You got to check your opponent out. When you go in the ring, if you see guys doing this, this is checking out. Look, John Jones all the time. He's checking. Like, what's going on? And he's mm -hmm. right up there to retrieve information. Retrieving information means what does this guy possessing? Is he panicking? Is he aggressive? Is he passive? Is he counter tap? If you have no information, even if you watch hundreds of videos, but the moment the guy comes into the fight, what attitude he has, that makes a difference. If he's that moment, he feels aggressive, then take your time. Time mm -hmm. will come to you. But if you're rushing, fools rush in, right? Yeah. So last thing I'm gonna say, as coaches, we recommend to you guys, even though you'll see fighters use the aggressive um, uh, formula. style, mm -hmm. formula, of just coming in with the big shot. Let's say Frank Edgar um, made him miss the kick and then Frank Edgar rushed him, came in, ducked down, threw an overhand right and connected and knocked him out. Everybody would have been praising Frankie. Yeah. But it still wouldn't have been the best idea because look what happened. He ended up, he, he's, he doesn't have the information yet. He's unsure. It, you don't want to start fights like that. As coaches, we recommend what Mancha said, you know, touch the guy a little bit, faint him first, not too committal in the beginning because you need to gather some information mm -hmm. to make a better plan mm -hmm. on what you're actually going to do. Mm -hmm. Unless that's the only way you can fight is go big or go home, but yeah. that's not what train uh, the uh, world's smart best. Fi yeah. smart, smart fighters are always yeah. understanding what's going on at that particular moment, that particular second. In this case, um, I think he got the wrong end of it. And I yeah. would always say, when you're going to fight, don't be too cautious, but retrieve information. Just keep on touching, you're doing something mm -hmm. that you can get something out of it. And if he's playing too passive, jump yeah. into it. It's beautiful. All right, guys, Teach Me Grappling. And teach now me we, have, we have Maja Reyes doing some striking <laughs> yeah. on Teach Me Grappling. Um, that's it. Comment, that's cool. comment down below. Please. Please let us know what you want to see Maja uh, teach you next. All right? Thank we'll see you, you guys next time Thank with you. more great stuff. We're out.